This could have been Jason in any of the sections of Jason on a season. It was a season to prepare for the season of Lent. And this is the season of Lent, says St. Augustine, St. Ambrose. They say that it is the most holy season of the year. The most holy season of the year, the most holy time of the year. It is the time of the tithing of the year. 365 days of the year. And from next Sunday, until the end of Lent, the 36 days are making a fast, and that will be a sacred fasting, and a sacred tithing of the year. And the first real reason for this tithing is to give worship to God. We make a sacrifice to show that we worship God, not only on the outside, but we worship God on the inside. We do fast in order to to curtail the passions, we pack fast in order to make reparation for sin, in order also to ask God to hear our prayers and see the sincerity with which we pray. But in fact, the first reason for fasting is a giving to God. It was a kind of fasting which was given by in the very beginning of Cain and Abel when they were to take their best fruits. Cain was supposed to take his best wheat and able his best sheep, and not eat them, but burn them up and kill them, and offer them as a sacrifice to God, so that they would take something which was for the good of themselves, such as wheat in the case of Cain, or such as sheep in the case of Abel, and not eat the sheep, and not take in the, the wheat, and give it to God. And God was displeased with the sacrifice of Cain, he was pleased with the sacrifice of Cain because Cain did not give his best. Cain gave what he would not really eat except and except that he had nothing else to eat. He gave away the dregs. He gave away the last things. Whereas God was very pleased with the sacrifice of sheep of the sheep given to him by God by Abel, because Abel offered of his best that which would have been the best for his his, his business the best for his food, the best for himself, he took that and gave it to God, showing by his sacrifice that God is first. And the great choice is made for us every day is, who is first? Who is first in our daily life? Unfortunately for most of us, and most of the time, it is simply ourselves that are first, and not God. Hence, one of the reasons why the season of Lent is put aside each year is that we have to remember that God is first, and that we must offer all things up to Him. Offer everything up to Him. We're going to meet Him on Good Friday. We're going to see His victory on Easter Sunday. But where are we going to be on that Good Friday? We know the location where we're going to be. We're on a journey between now and Good Friday to the cross. And what do we know about the location at the end of the journey? There's not one person on earth. There isn't one who is going to not be present at the cross. Every single man, woman, and child, friend and foe of God, irreligious or religious, no matter what religion they belong to, every single one of them is going to arrive at the end of the 40 days. They will arrive at the crucifixion place at Golgotha. We're all going to be there. So we must understand we cannot choose from whence we came. We came from nothing by the goodness of God. And we cannot choose who is going to be with us on the day of death. It is going to be Jesus Christ. And we're going to meet Him at the cross. The only choices we make are what do we do on the journey in between? Are we going to journey to the left side of the cross? Or are we going to journey to the right side of the cross? Will we journey with the holy apostles and the holy women? Or will we journey with the mob? With Caiaphas? With the Judas? How are we going to make our journey? We're on the journey and we can't stop its destination. And so, therefore, St. Paul says, Consider the journey, or rather St. Ambrose in the sermon today, 
Consider the journey of Abraham. That's the greatest journey that ever was. The greatest journey of faith, that is. Because God told Abraham, before there were the sight of so many miracles, for us, we can follow Jesus Christ. But we have the examples of so many saints. We got the examples of so many who have gone before us. And when they follow Christ, that such wonderful things happen. And we know the same, same things that happen to us. Well, it's easier for us to follow Christ. But Abraham had only the love of God in his heart. Only belief of God in his mind. And hope. And God said to him, Rise out of thy bed, leave thy house, thy kindred, thy home, and all that thou hast, and go to the land that I will show thee. He doesn't know where the land is. It is the great journey of faith. When we say that we live with faith, and when single scripture says a just man lives by faith, what does it mean? We believe in the Word of God because God said so. Most of us believe what God says because it's all we're familiar with. We believe what God says because we see the evidences that we like that make us believe what God says. We believe what God says when we think that we can survive in this world and prepare for the next without too much discomfort. But do we really believe what God says simply because He is God? Because He says it. This is the act of faith. I believe these truths and all the truths the Holy Catholic Church believes and teaches because Thou hast revealed them who canst neither deceive nor be deceived. What is the reason of our belief? Hence our Lord allows us to go on a journey, and He allows us to experience difficulties and challenges. He allows there to be many difficulties, many challenges along the journey. To see, do we really believe that he, we will arrive at that land which He has prepared for us? As St. Augustine, St. Ambrose says, Remember, He did not just tell His apostles, Follow me, take up your cross. He didn't just say that. Go where I go and suffer. Because he wouldn't do that for the human heart. He gave us hope. He didn't just say suffer with him. He didn't just say toil with him. He didn't just say watch all night with him. He said if you watch all night, if you toil with me, if you take up your cross and follow me, and you are with me when you arrive at the end of the destination, the final destination, which is the cross. When you are with me at that day, at that time, you will have paradise. You will be in a land of perpetual and infinite happiness. We will see God face to face. Every single act that we did that was, that, was, that was for God, no matter how small, shall be rewarded. And the reward shall be great. When we say we believe what God said, we don't just believe His doctrines, but we also believe in the conclusion of the journey. That's why sacred scripture says the just man lives by faith, and the season of Lent is each year time to test us, a little bit of a test. Am I living by faith? How can I live a little bit more by faith? And then St. Paul gives the instruction from the beginning of this season, from the Corinthians chapter 13, the great instruction about charity. Because all that we're trying to do is increase divine love inside of us. And St. John gives a simple reason why, because Deus caritas est. God is charity, God is love, and therefore life for those creatures that are made out of nothing for God which is every creature, but especially man and the angels, is to put what is God more and more inside of us. And God is charity. Deus caritas es. God is love. We have to put that love more and more inside of us. But there are three that are united together inside of us on earth. 
faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is charity. It must be the motivating cause. And what is charity? Love of God. Why do we love our neighbors? Because our neighbors are made by God. Because they are made for God. It is only God that is the reason for the love of our neighbors. If we love our neighbors for any other reason, it can't be stable. It can't hold on. We love our neighbors because of God. We love all things that He made because of God. And then we make sacrifice in the season of Lent. One reason for the sacrifice? To give worship to God. A second reason for the sacrifice is to remind us that the things of this world aren't forever. And we'll have to leave them behind. So we might as well practice leaving a little bit of things behind right now. Hence, we make a small task to leave a little something behind. We offer a little something during the season of Lent. So if we leave a little something behind freely now, it helps us to remind us that we love God more than food. We love God more than stuff. We love God more than this world. When we take something given to Him, and we show by our actions that we love God more than these things. And remember also, as we travel on the second journey to the cross, we have to go to the cross. But when we arrive at the cross, what we see, it is true that one side of the cross, we see on the outside, on the surface of the cross, we see the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We see the scourging and the crowning of thorns. We see the nails and so on. We hear the sound of a loud mob mocking and cursing them and asking them to come down from the cross. That's the physical outside. But when we arrive at that cross, look underneath these things, and we see the greatest act of love, the greatest act of charity that has ever been the kind of man be. It is the window inside of God who is Caritas. The window inside of God. It is a doorway inside of God. It is a place where saints have spent their entire life at the cross. And St. Dismas only spent, his only time with Jesus Christ was spent with those three hours on the cross. And after those three hours, he went to heaven. So if there's any place to meet Christ, it's there. It's there that we receive the greatest gift of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that's why it's most fitting in this time of a great crisis throughout the whole church, where the church is undergoing a crucifixion. It's most fitting that God would say at this time that it's a time of Blessed Virgin Mary. She was the one who made St. John able to stand for the cross. She was the one who made the Apostle St. Peter to not despair after he had failed so terribly. And she was the one that preserved the holy women she is the one that God business to see that her son was God, and her son was king, and her son was warrior, and her son was defeating his enemies, and Dismas could see that. How could he see that? Because he saw the beauty and the power of men. He saw that mother of sorrow standing before the cross. When we arrive at the cross, we don't just arrive at the place where bad men crucified Jesus Christ. We arrive at the place where our Lord Jesus Christ gave us Mary as our mother. We are at a place where Satan is destroyed by the victory of Christ. Where finally the weak apostles that go back and forth begin to become strong. They don't realize that they're being strengthened at this cross. They're being deepened at this cross. In the time when our Lord Jesus Christ is finally able to release the paraclete, is going to release the consoler, the time of the conception of the Holy Mother Church. So when we arrive at this cross, it is not only the blood on the outside. There is so much more going on on the inside, and it is a most beautiful place. We are all going to it, but some shall not see its beauty. Hence, St. Ambrose says, consider this last miracle. Two last miracles of Christ. Well, in between you have the reason of Lazarus, a very important miracle. But when he was leaving, he was going from, into Jerusalem the last time. A man on the side of the road is blind, and there have been many blind men. He has cured many blind. But our Lord Jesus Christ decides to keep 
he walking past this man because he's going secretly on his way back to Jerusalem. And he told his apostles, I'm going there that all the prophecies be fulfilled. The Son of Man will be betrayed, handed over, crucified, died, and buried, and on the third day shall rise from the dead. And they don't understand. And why don't they understand? The practical reason why they don't understand is they are afraid for their own lives. Remember St. Thomas said, let us go to Jerusalem, let us die with him. Now the apostles are thinking, we're going to go with Christ, we're going to be faithful, we're going to go to Jerusalem, and we're going to die. But we'd rather be with him. But they're afraid of dying. And because they're afraid of dying, they're not listening to what our Lord Jesus Christ has to say. He has said, the Son of Man is going to Jerusalem, you're coming with me. Well, the Son of Man is going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man is going to die. You're not going to die. The Son of Man is going to have be scourged, crowned with thorns, and he's going to be nailed to a tree, and he's going to rise on the third day, and all the prophecies said about him, about his suffering, shall be fulfilled. But they were so worried about their own pain, about their own fear, about their own worries that they couldn't think of what he had to say. And hence it says three times in the Gospel of St. Luke, they didn't understand, neither did they understand, neither did they understand. Three times it says they didn't understand. They didn't understand because their thoughts were turned only upon themselves, even though they were Christ himself. But they wanted to be faithful, so they traveled with him to Jerusalem. And then, of course, the miracle of Lazarus happened. But on the way, on the way to Jerusalem, there was a blind man on the side of the road, and the apostles were, were, were forlorn, and Christ simply walked by. And what did the blind man have to do? He had to cry out with a loud voice multiple times, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And this is the time right now when Christ is the church, as we're on the way to the completion of the crucifixion of the church, that our Lord wants to hear souls cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And what is going to happen to the priests? What are they going to hear from the priests? What are they going to hear from the crowd that follows Christ? Be silent. It is the followers of Christ that tell the man to be silent. Now normally when someone wanted to be cured in earlier times, they would bring him to Christ. But this day they don't bring him to Christ. And why is that? Because they see the sadness of the apostles. They see the seriousness of the apostles. They see these apostles are very disturbed. And they know the history of the situation. Jesus Christ is going to go to Jerusalem. I think he's going to Jerusalem. He'll be killed when he gets there. And there is a forlornness and a sadness. And Christ is walking by. It's not the time for miracles. It's not the time for miracles. And so they tell the man, be quiet. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. But he cries out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And louder and louder. Until eventually our Christ, Christ finally hears his word. What dost thou want? What do you want? That I might see. We can take the most terrible sufferings. We can take the most difficult trials if we only see the good that will come from them. If we can only see how God works in His mysterious ways and brings out goodness from every trial. And we only see that, that through trials, Satan is conquered and Christ will bring us through them each and every one. But we don't see our Lord Jesus Christ cured His eyes. And then on Good Friday, as he's about to be crucified, Holy Thursday night, as he's about to be crucified, he will cure the ears of Malchus. He cures the eyes. He will cure the ears. His final two curings. Praise Lazarus from the dead. It was a great miracle that occasioned the whole situation of crucifixion. But his last regular miracle, the curing of the eyes and the curing of the ears, as we enter into a time of great struggle, our eyes must be open and we look towards Christ that we might see. Our ears must be open to hear his sacred word and to see his workings in the time of trial. 
We're going to the cross. Our Lord has given us a little test. But when we get to that cross, it's going to be a beautiful thing. So on the journey between now and the cross, between now and the Jesus on Sunday, a few days now, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, and the arrival of the cross on Good Friday, let's offer up this sacred time. Let's offer a little something to our Lord, make a small sacrifice of some kind during the season of Lent. Try to keep the fast of Lent, the two small meals, take it together, which should not be larger than the, the greater than the main meal of the day, and meet just once a day. Of course, no meat on Ash Wednesday, no meat on any Friday, as usual. And then, but to add into it, the simple fast, offer a little something for our Lord as a sacrifice, so that we put God first, that we know we're going to have to leave behind the things of this world, and that we're ready to leave them, but for a greater possession, for a greater glory, for a greater sight, and to get the strength that our prayers may be heard. They say it's not the time of miracles, but it is time of miracles. God did still perform miracles, even on the way to the cross. He cured Malchus' ear. And here on the way to Jerusalem, when they're going to kill him, he cured the blind man. And when he arrived there, he raised Lazarus from the dead after being dead for four days. Even when it's not the time of miracles, he still performs miracles. His goodness still comes forth. He protected Dismas and converted his heart and made him into a saint. He inspired Simon the Cyrenian. He gave courage to, to Nicodemus the coward. He made John able to be faithful and filled with charity at the foot of the cross. He gave us his greatest gift of the mother. All during this time of the great trials, and the most beautiful gifts. It's not so bad a time. We will discover that as we travel the struggles of life, that they are the source of all our blessings. We will persevere in our struggles and, and, and arrive at the feast at the day of the crucifixion on the right side of our Lord, ready to receive his mother as our own mother, and then she will carry us the theme of heaven. Who's there with us? You all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm -hmm.